Bizarre Brain Comics. Oh. Oh. Hello, hello, Gary here for Bizarre Brain Comics, and welcome. This is Bizarre Brain Comics, where I like to take a look at some older comics. Talk about the, uh, the characters, the creators, the arts, and, and the stories. And what we're going to talk about this time is from Atlas Comics. This is Atlas Seaboard. Tales of Evil number three featuring Man Monster. Man Monster. There's no no title other than Man Monster. This is in, to introduce this character. And yeah, we have to have to identify it as Atlas Seaboard to distinguish it from the pre-Marvel Atlas days. Let's delve into the big book of knowledge. Okay, Tales of Evil number three from 1975, Atlas Seaboard. Written by, well, he's scripted by writer Gary Friedrich with a plot by Tony Isabella and Rich Buckler, who also did the art. Rich Buckler also did the artwork. Man Monster is a character introduced in and it only appearance in Tales of Evil number three. It was slated to have his own title, but the publisher folded before it could be uh, uh, published. And the artist is Rich Buckler from 1949 to 2017. He's an American comic artist, best known for his many works for Marvel Comics in the 70s and 80s. And he co-created the character Deathlock. And I really, really liked Deathlock in the 70s. Because uh, I was really interested in cyborgs. And he was one of the early cyborgs in comics. He was involved in, in comics fandom as a teen in Detroit. He came to run a local uh, convention, the D Detroit Triple Fan Fair. And his first professional comics work was a four-page Flash Gordon story for King Features comic book in 1976, correction, 1967. And for DC, he drew uh, the Lois Lane backup feature, Rose and Thorn. Doesn't want to stay lit. Eventually, working in Marvel, he drew virtually all of the Marvel primary characters, such as Black Panther, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. He even had one, uh, had one issue of uh, the Avengers in which he imitated the Jack Kirby style. And it was just for that one, that one issue. I think it was like an annual or something like that. And uh, for a time, he drew the Incredible Hulk, Hulk newspaper strip. Through the 80s, he did a lot of work at DC and then at Archie Comics for their uh, new adventure Red Circle line, including the classic superheroes in The Mighty Crusaders. We'll talk about them some other time. So in the meantime, let us have a look at Atlas Comics, Man Monster. Here we go. Get a better look at the cover illustration, Man Monster. This is, and of course the cover was drawn by Rich Buckler. 
and I always kind of liked his art. He had a had a nice, is good dynamic, good with uh, anatomy, and he has had a style that always kind of reminded me of a uh, uh, little bit of Neil Adams or Dick Dick, Dick Giordano. Very dynamic, very very strong anatomy, uh, almost a fo photorealistic, <laughs> and I kind of like. Here we see the uh, this the character getting zapped by this weird guy in this weird costume, and in the and he in the process he is transformed into the man monster. But that is not how he becomes the man monster. Now. This is, of course, this is a real rough copy. I bought it. It was like this when I got it several years ago, and so it's it's had a lot of lot of wear on it. Now I need to tell you a little bit about Atlas if you're not familiar with them. Atlas Seaboard. Um, when what was his name? Uh, Goodman. I've forgotten his first name. Goodman. He was the the publisher of and head of. Um, Atlas Marvel and then later Marvel Comics. Now, he was Stan Lee's boss in the late 60s. He um, he sold Marvel Comics and part of the stipulation was because his son continued continued on working there was that uh, when the, the, the current editor-in-chief and, and uh, publisher, I should say, publisher Stan was was editor in chief. Um, uh, left, retired. His son was supposed to get the post of of publisher under the this new uh, the new ownership. Well, that did not happen. They they named Stan Lee as publisher, so was, he went from editor in chief to publisher, and that did not make. Uh, Goodman happy and so he invested a lot of money in starting up a new comic company and and attracting a lot of the uh, uh, the creators from Marvel and DC and you can see this uh, this cover has a look has the Marvel look to it and it was his plan was to kind of uh, uh, really cut into Marvel, so try to, trying to hurt Marvel, primarily. And in the process, he, he wooed a lot of the creators away because uh, he paid higher page rates for the artists and writers. And they only remained, uh, remained in business for just a couple of years. And uh, nothing lasted more than uh, three or four issues. And uh, unfortunately, this character it has a lot of potential. I'm not entirely thrilled with with the origin with the, with the story, but it may have paid off later, but never got that far. Go, as I said, uh, Rich Buckler artwork, nice, and strong, dynamic. Yeah, uh, Rich Buckler also did uh, he he did a couple of, of books f uh, for. Uh, uh, instruction books uh, for how to how on how to to do comic books uh, write and draw and then hopefully get work in the field I had I had one of those books at one time I had a lot of his artwork and even even uh, had uh, reproductions of his uh, pencils for uh, featuring spider-man here we have the splash page. I like the splash page, and it indicates that the, that this monster, the man monster, is something huge. And I wish, really, kind of wish it had been, because I really like the the giant monsters and stuff. But it, but it's not. It's just a uh, like a ghost image that was uh, um, foreshadowing for later in the story. Here's this guy. His name is. Uh, What's his name? Saunders? Uh, Sanders? <sighs> I've forgotten the character's name. Paul Sanders. He was a, a an Olympic swimmer. And he's really rich. And he's known for Playboy. He's being, and he's here for a photo shoot for a, uh, 
for a feature story of uh, uh, a women's lib magazine. He said, and he just said, hey, here, get a good shot of this. Get a good shot. Hey, he, he just thinks this guy is just a, not a very ni nice guy. Thinks a whole lot of himself. Very egotistical. Thinks a whole lot of himself. And thinks he's just God's gift to women. So he takes the, the ladies out on this yacht because they're going out to the... Uh, Um, the well, a uh, 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 drilling platform for his far father's oil company, and they're heading out there. And he likes to to show off a lot, so he dives in, and he's going to swim out to the oil well, to the uh, uh, oil rig, while the the boat goes by, and the ladies are taking shots. Well, might as well we're here, might as well get some shots. But they're they are uh, totally unimpressed with this fella. Meanwhile, something had come up from the wellhead. Something, we don't know what. And it gets all over in this in this uh, wave. Gets all over Paul Sanders. He thinks he's going to be swamped. He goes, dives down, down, and he passes out. Here's the, the yacht is pulling back into port, and he is he had been been pulled out of the water. His life was saved by these ladies, who don't think a whole lot of him. But he, in the process, now he starts to transform a bit. Oh no! To get the scales, he, he oh really? I like the, this nice transition here to this monster, and it's like. He's out of his mind. He doesn't know what he's doing. Ah, monster! And it kind of, except for being red, it's it's kind of reminiscent of uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. He looks as though it could be a a, a quasi aquatic creature that he's transformed into. But then he passes out, and he, and he transforms back or what in the process? Oh, not yet. The girls cover him up. Put him in the car instead of calling for an ambulance or something. They say, "Well, this is, this is a great story. We got to follow through with this, but we should really call call for an ambulance uh, later." <laughs> so they take him to their hotel room. He's well, he's out cold, and uh, they put him into the sh into the shower and put the hot water on full blast, trying to trying to re uh, resuscitate him. But in the process, the hot water transforms him back into his human form and he, he's just exhausted and while well, they're keeping a watch on him one of the girl, ladies goes out to get some food and uh in the during the night well they got him laying there on the couch this costume fella creeps into into the room who the heck is this oh we never really do find out wakes wakes paul up and is threatening him with some kind of blackmail so Paul knows this guy for some reason, somehow, and he has wants nothing to do with him. It's a really nice anatomy, uh, great visual storytelling, and so if you're not, it, so he pulls his his uh, deathlock looking ray gun out and said, "If you're not going to cooperate, I'll I'll just kill, uh, kill you because you're not going to anyway." Farewell, Paul Sanders. You die as you lived, an idiot. And he zaps him with the with the, the laser gun, and it kind of sets a fire. But in the process, he is transformed into the man monster, uh, and very dramatic, very strong imagery here. Slams that guy. He crashes through through the window onto the patio, and just. So he doesn't know what to do. Oh my gosh, what the heck happened? So this this guy in the funny costume, his which allows him to fly, he takes off. Oh, and the man monster is not happy. <clears throat> he looks around. You can really see he kind of looks a lot like like creature from the Black Lagoon in a way. And the the place is burning. Some of he has some thoughts. He's uh, Paul Saunders is still slightly aware within the within this beast's this man monster's body he knows that there's danger he smashes through saves the saves the young lady in the hotel room climbs out as emergency vehicles arrive 
climbs up, brings brings the lady down. And of course, they think he is the menace. The cops think he is the menace. So they let her down. And then they go, Alt, surrender, or we'll shoot. And we'll shoot to kill. And here's this dramatic conclusion to, to this chapter. Dun, dun, dun. And it says, to be continued in the first exciting issue of Man Monster, which never came about. So we don't know what happened. I am not thrilled with the writing. The artwork is great. And the second part of this, because it was Tales of Me, which was a, uh, it, it was a, a, an anthology book. And bog, this bog beast it continued from a previous issue. It was a it had some really nice artwork, uh, a horrifying looking critter, the way he was. But uh, Man Monster never went any farther than this. It's a great dr dramatic cover, uh, dramatic uh, scenes in the in the book. The uh, don't know who this guy was, what the deal was. We never had a chance to find out. And it may have paid off. I really was not thrilled with uh, with the character of Paul Sanders, but I'm sure he would have become a nicer person later on. And that is an introduction to this character. And I hope you enjoyed it. I really like the uh, like the imagery. I liked the design of the monster, but it didn't go anywhere. Thank you for joining me. Um, uh, please like, share, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, all the YouTube stuff. And remember, comics are art.